Hello friends, uh, myself Venugopal Panchamurthy. Uh, I am working as a senior curriculum engineer at Masai. Now, in this video, we are going to talk about two important things. First, what is DSA? Second, why any coder should learn the DSA? Now, before we see about these two things, uh, I'll take a simple problem. With that problem, I'll try to cover these two points. So that problem is uh, finding uh, given number is prime or not. So if you learn any programming language, like when you study about loops, this is the one of the question you might have encountered. So, you know, if you want to check any number is prime or not, what is the simple logic we will use? So we'll take all the numbers. Let's say the number n is equal to 144. I want to check. So we we'll start from one and we'll take one by one. You know, we'll start dividing. So how many factors that are there? We try to count it. So if you see here, so here I have taken one number, like let's say n one. 144, right? So what I wrote, all the numbers starting from 1 to 144. Now I'll try to check. Is 1 divides 144? Yes. 2 divides? Yes. 3 divides? Yes. So like that, I'll try to count all the, you know, divisors, friends, which means factors. So if you see here, I listed down all the factors here, like 1, 2, 3. So 1 is a factor, 2 is the factor, 3. Like the total till 144, these are all the factors that we have got. So in the first approach, what I do, I'll I'll start, from, let me call this is approach number one. So first approach, I'll start from one, then two, I'll go till the last number and I'll count total how many factors are there. So if I found out factors are more than two, then what does it mean? It means that number is not prime. But what is the prime number actually? No, before we see. So any number divides by one and with that number is called as a prime number. So starting from one, going to till that number and counting how many factors are there. When I know that factors are more than two, greater than two, which means number is not prime. Yeah. So this is one approach, friends. Okay. So next approach, what we can do is, you know already, you know, the number one and the number itself are obviously factors. Any positive number if you take. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll avoid this and this, right? And I'll start from number two to like one number before that means till 143, I'll go and divide the numbers. I mean that number 144, right? So because of this, at any point of time, okay, think for some time, any point of time, if I found out that, let's say this is not, this anyhow we are ignored, okay? If I found any one of the other factor, which means I can stop and I can tell that this is not a prime number, right? So here itself, if you see, I found a number two, which is again divides the number 44. Then in fact, I no need to go all these three all remaining whatever the factors that are there, right? The simple intuition, right? Okay, if number is not prime, okay, this, this might, but if number is prime, so in the worst case, you might need to go till 143 because we can't give any guarantee, right? Now, uh, look, like compared to previous approach, previous approach, which is running for n, now here what we have done, two factors we have ignored and, you know, n minus two comparisons yeah, or n minus two divisions we are trying to perform. If the number is prime, okay, a number is not prime, this might work. If number is prime, the still we need to go till, but in terms of divisions, okay, so n minus two, we have able to remove it. Okay, so this is the second approach. Let's go and see the next approach. Okay, so now, now think careful. And if you see this table, friends, you know, starting from one, going till 144. In fact, I wrote all the factors here, right? So, so in this approach, it is taking n minus 2. Now, now in the third approach, so if you see the root of 144, if you observe the root of 144, which is nothing but 12. Now, if you can find out factors from 1 to 12, if you see here, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9, 12, all the factors. Now, from after 12 onwards, if you try to see next to factors, if you observe carefully on the left hand side and if you see the right hand side, same things are going to get repeated. So therefore, from here, what we have observed, you no need to go till last number that is 143, not required. If you go till half of that, if you see here, if you go till half of that number, then whatever the left hand side are there, okay, so that is enough friends. If you see 9 into 16, 8 into 18, 6 into 24. Right. So therefore half, I mean, till root n, that is enough. So which means in this approach, if you go 1 to root n, that is enough. Okay. Now, now because of this, our earlier first approach, n, n divisors, afterwards, n minus 2, afterwards, it is root n. It is root till root n, that is enough. Friends. Okay. Now, even in root n also, still some betterment we can do. Like what we can do in root n also. 
first of all one you can directly remove because we know one definitely divides any number start from two now when you're starting from two if you think carefully friends is it required to do four six eight all these even numbers think careful is it required no not required not required friends i hope take take some uh, time and try to think why these no need to check if you check only odd that is enough so we started with n then n minus 2 then root n and still even root n also some of the divisors we are skipping actually division operations so like now that term like so this is since only one number so we have stored it here friends now let's say what if if i'm having 10000 numbers or one crore numbers if i'm having then I have to take 10 crore, 1 crore variables if I want to check 1 crore numbers. So taking 1 crore variables is impossible. So then I should require some data structure. What is data structure? In the name itself says that it will structure the data. Data structure means it structures the data. Like what way you want to store it in the data. Okay. So a lot of data structures that we are having. Like arrays, stacks, queues, binary search tree, AVL tree, heap, graph. You don't worry if you don't know any one of these, but every data structure have its own specialty friends. Okay, so I'll, I'll share one example. No, we won't be get good understanding about it. Let's say friends, I want to travel from, let's say Chennai to Hyderabad. Okay, so popular, we will use Google Maps, right? So I started, I typed the source as Chennai, destination as Hyderabad. Now, when I type, when I'm pressing the enter, it is taking some time to load to show the best route. So here, if you see Chennai to Hyderabad, so one way it is showing via Nellur, we can go to Hyderabad. Maybe some, there are many other ways are there. If you want to from Chennai to go to Hyderabad, I can go Bangalore, Bangalore, then Hyderabad I can go. But it, it should suppose to the, you know, uh, shortest path that is available. Let's say if I want, it is showing 13 hours, another way 24 hours, another, another route also there which take 48, you know, hours. But shortest time I need to reach from Chennai to, you know, Hyderabad. So here, what is happening here? So... Chennai, Hyderabad, like that so many cities are there. So how they are able uh, storing the, all the cities and what is their distance, how they are storing and after storing everything, how they are, what algorithm they are applying there. So there is something called Dijkstra algorithm is there, which will find out from shortest route from single source to multiple paths are there. That is one of the algorithm, right? And there is something called Floyd uh, Warshall algorithm is there. So these are all the different algorithms, friends. Right. So the data structure algorithms, both are completely different terms. Actually, data structure is used to store the data in efficient manner. Okay. So if, if you take this graph example only, maybe even you can store all the cities in the arrays also. But, but that might, if you store it completely in arrays, we might not use effectively. And then everything in the memory stored in arrays only. But there is people invented term called graph. Right now, on, on top of the graph, the algorithms came actually, different graph algorithms like BFS, DFS, you know, Dijkstra, as I said, Bellman Ford. So these are the different algorithms, friends. So data structure is different and algorithm is different. Don't get confused. So if any problem is given, now, now what is DSA problem is done. Why any coder should learn DSA? Let's come to that question. I had a one problem like solving, let's say you are trying to implement a same kind of maps to your company, let's say you right so your company had some networks so i don't want to use google maps and i want to create my own maps then so you should first of all first find out where what are all the cities let's say you are working i mean your company tries to do the service then you need to store the all the cities on top of that you have to design some own algorithm see every algorithm have its own pros and cons friends because you need to analyze the time complexity ultimately so therefore if any problem is given first you need to start with what are all the algorithms that are there if you take simple prime number example only we started with n then n minus 2 then root n even in root n also so many we have avoided the divisors i avoided all the even numbers right now therefore identifying the right data structure is most important any problem that is there after identifying the right data structure, what is the right algorithm that I can apply on the data structure? Now, if you take the graph problem only, graph problem only, many algorithms are there. But out of that, which algorithm giving the best time complexity, which means less time complexity, right? So, so you know all these logics, friends, and that logics directly or indirectly will help to solve the problems on your company uh, might ask some other problems, right? So, to solve the problems, you know, these 
intuition or this knowledge which you are learning now will definitely help there so one one more example and i'll i'll conclude it so let's say i want to book a movie ticket friends so we might be thinking that you know there is lot of things that are happening uh, in the book my show but what happening friends it everything will convert it into a simple 2d array only okay so where you can see all the seats number if you see these are all the rows and these are all the columns so whichever seat you want ultimately it's boiled down to a simple 2d array so then multiple like next if i time like next india match when when it is happening now now when i shooting this it's on the 11th we yesterday itself i mean 10th we lost at the match right now if you see then next when is the next day india match now if you see here total how much time it is giving the result now we five press enter see it is taking 0.59 seconds the time if if it if it is take one hour who will stay who will view? no one have that much time right so therefore see how much time it is giving just in 0.59 seconds not even complete second also next it is saying the new zealand versus india next match out of these many results like how fast your algorithm is working why do you think google become so popular because of the search engine right and what what search algorithms it is using something called binary search or if you take any phone book if you are your phone book if you take so how the names are going to organize in a form of lexicographical order why they ordered in the lexicographical order because if you order in the lexicographic binary search you can apply easily so normal search will take n it will reduce into log n comparisons so all this going to learn friends in at uh, masai we teach all these things in a proper in proper manner right so i hope i answered two questions what is dsa why any quarter should learn dsa yeah that's it friends so thank you for watching